wanted to thank you for joining me today for this um, IP Fabric webinar on Enterprise Network Automation Strategy. Some quick housekeeping just to let you know this session is being recorded and will be made available on our YouTube channel in the next few days. Um, we'll send you a link when it's ready to be viewed. I'll be talking through our view on network automation and how IP Fabric contributes to your implementation of it. Over the next half an hour or so, I'll be walking through a few slides and I'll give you a quick demo to give you a flavor of how we support network automation. After that, I'll open the floor to your questions, but feel free to drop them in the Q&A window at any time throughout the webinar and I'll uh, answer them when I see them. So who am I? Uh, my name is Darren Fulwell. I'm IP Fabrics product evangelist with a particular focus on network automation. I've been a network engineer, consultant, and architect for more than 25 years. In conversation the other day, actually, I realized that it's over 30 years since I first had to troubleshoot an Ethernet network, which is absolutely frightening. Things have changed an awful lot over that time, but the fundamentals, of course, always remain the same. Of particular interest to me in recent years has been the shift towards software defined and software controlled networks. Indeed, one of my pet projects called in it six is an initiative to help old dogs like me, network engineers with old school skills, to learn the tricks of network automation. Which kind of begs the question, what do we really mean by network automation? A commonly held view amongst network engineers and their educators and trainers is that it's primarily concerned with programming using Python and building task automation scripting using PowerShell and shell scripts. Software defined networking brings a centralized control plane for all of the network devices within its scope, essentially rendering configuration from a central template with zero touch provisioning and being operated through a centralized GUI and API. Taking SDN a step further, some network vendors push their capabilities as self-healing or autonomic networks. These are closely related, I suppose, to the idea of intent-based networking. A controller looks after configuration of the network devices, then assesses whether the network is doing the things it should, and if not, provides a feedback loop to reconfigure and optimize the network devices. But a more general view might be that of integration of all of the different elements of network tooling so that we have a common view across all related systems. The centralized inventory should be accurate and kept up to date. The documentation should be automatically refreshed from the network configuration and the state. Troubleshooting information should be centralized, consistent and available to all interested parties. Events should be triggered in ticketing systems by conditions occurring in the monitoring platforms and so on. In reality, network automation could be considered as being all of these or none of them. Ultimately, we class network automation as any activity that automates operational tasks to improve network service to the business. Now, that improvement of service can take any form, but should very much be co considered and couched in business terms where possible. Gartner suggests four key drivers for network automation. The first being agility, the ability for the network operations team to respond quickly, effectively, and with as little friction as possible to add, move, or change requests from the business for that network service. Or, indeed to incident tickets which need a troubleshooting exercise thus minimizing mean time to resolution and maximizing service availability they refer to the effectiveness of monitoring and security so ensuring that the operational ecosystem which monitors your it systems accurately reflects the real life availability of those systems and is able to demonstrate that the system is indeed behaving as intended and doing it securely. Of course, we all want to reduce costs. By ensuring that we maximize the efficiency of network operations staff, we can minimize wasted time and effort. 
while that doesn't necessarily mean that automating people out of a job, it does mean that existing people are better able to deliver the demands of the business. So there is no need for additional resource often taken on to deliver projects. And simplification, which is an often misunderstood point. Automating network operations doesn't simplify the network in any real sense. The same elements are present and can go wrong in exactly the same way. So network engineering staff still need to understand and appreciate the technical details. It's those fundamentals that we talked about earlier. Simplification in this context refers to the consumption of the service. For example, the opportunities for providing um, self-service, ads, moves and changes, and the delivery of data relating to the operation of that service to customers without having to engage operational staff and divert them from other tasks. Now, Gartner also suggests a maturity model for network automation that starts with configuration and change management. The classic network automation view of being able to gather configuration data for network devices, then being able to write back changes to the network as they're required. This might mean a screen scrape approach to automating CLI or in more advanced cases using an API. Fundamental to all of this is the ability to validate the success of changes through automated testing. The next stage is orchestration, being able to build a workflow of automated tasks across a number of different configuration domains with a degree of branching and looping logic if necessary. Often this will require varying methods of access to those configuration domains, again potentially using CLI for one platform and maybe API access for another, but ultimately combining tasks to achieve a single outcome and handling them as such. In parallel with orchestration, Gartner refer to a policy phase. This is where a configuration domain is changed to refer to a centralized policy repository, typically for security. And the configuration of individual devices is simplified and standardized to a template. This enables two things, fast rollout of new policy by changing the central repository and pushing that data out to, uh, to devices, and easy replacement of devices at failure or upgrade by simply swapping out the device, applying that standard config, which refers back to the policy engine. And then we introduce intent-based networking. It's the next iteration in which, in this case, you express the business intent and that intent is rendered as an orchestration workflow to deliver it possibly with changes to a policy engine. The ultimate difference here is that it also makes changes into the monitoring and visibility systems to be able to validate that the behavior of the network is actually in line with that intent and creates a feedback loop to fix the network behavior should it stray outside the boundaries. Now, this is a great model to show how an organization might approach the introduction of the various degrees of network automation into their operational processes. But, and there's always a but, there's an assumption that you have an understanding of the network in the first place to make all this work. For that reason, we add an extra stage, providing visibility across the network. By visibility, what we mean is automatically collecting inventory configuration and state data from across the whole network. So we were able to map out the relationships between network nodes and domains and gain an analytic view of the operation of the network. Once you have this level of visibility, that deep, rich data can educate all of the subsequent phases. Let's take a look at IP Fabric and try and see how it might fit that model. The IP Fabric platform has three main elements. The detailed multi-vendor discovery engine connects to most major network vendor platforms. You can see a selection of those here. And it retrieves inventory, configuration, and state data from all of them. 
The system then analyzes the data it's collected, maps out the relationships in the network across all the layers, both intended and active, from physical connections right the way up to routing protocol relationships. It then stores that holistic view of the network across vendors and configuration domains and including data about the endpoints attached to the network in a graph database for retrieval by users. As an interactive operational system, IP Fabric provides a web UI from which you can search and access the entire contents of the database as tables, query results, and dynamic topology diagrams, effectively replacing your operational documentation. During its analysis phase, as IP Fabric is building its topology information, it also runs a series of verification checks. These effectively validate that regardless of how devices are configured, that they're behaving and interacting as they were intended. That might be anything from ensuring that routing protocol adjacencies are stable to devices having the correct NTP settings to MTU values matching both ends of the link. There are more than 100 checks enabled by default and the user has the ability to create their own based on the contents of the IP Fabric database. You can even simulate connect connectivity between two endpoints and verify that they can or can't talk and run that as a check at each snapshot. The results of these checks are then discovered and displayed in a dashboard in the web UI and can be used to ensure that the environment is compliant with regulation or best practice without having to manually audit the network. And of course, having this vast pool of information to hand means that when it comes to troubleshooting, we can cut through a lot of assumptions and carry out verification checks to rule out long running or regular recurring issues. And of course, you don't have to go searching for data in the network by trawling through devices hop by hop. Installing IP Fabric is a very quick and straightforward process. After a simple installation of a single VM on-prem or in the public cloud, followed by the very efficient discovery process, you have data available to you that brings immediate value through the web UI. The next steps are then to look at how you integrate the platform into your wider operational tool set. IP Fabric's web UI accesses the system data through a RESTful API, which is also available for external systems to request data. Using this API, we're able to expose the intelligence of the platform to be integrated with infrastructure monitoring or CMDB, automation platforms, programming languages, ticketing systems, even chat ops. We've established a customer and partner community who are building these very integrations right now and are sharing them with us and each other through open source repositories. We're in constant communication with them in our Slack channel and we collaboratively create content, videos, blog posts, and so on to keep everybody engaged. So how exactly does IP Fabric help with the deployment of network automation? IP Fabric really kickstarts your network automation journey with its discovery. With its analysis and automated documentation, it gives an unparalleled holistic view of your network's inventory, configuration and state. Rather than having to build or assemble a collection engine from open source components, for example, once IP Fabric's installed, you have a regularly updated central repository of deep, rich network data that can then be distributed to other platforms and used to make automated decisions. As we've already seen, the system backs up configurations and carries out validation checks when it catches a snapshot of the network. This allows us to accurately plan for automated change, ensuring that we start from a valid known state. And we can carry out post change checks to ensure that the accuracy of the implementation and to assist with any go no go decisions to back changes out. The multi domain aspect of IP Fabric helps with planning and building orchestration workflows. As we collect all the network data in one place, it's possible to see in one hit 
all the elements which affect a specific end-to-end -end traffic flow using our path simulation tool. It's also useful to be able to understand how objects are presented in the network. For example, where endpoints are connected or where IP subnets live or which VLANs are configured and where, so that the impact of a change can be understood end to end. An IP Fabric's end-to-end -end path and validation checks also allow us to ensure that policy has been correctly deployed. When policy information is pulled from that central repository, it isn't necessarily included and embedded in device configuration, but rendered in real time into the state of the network device. Because IP Fabric doesn't just use configuration data to build out our model of the network, we're able to check that the policy has been rendered correctly and has the desired effect. An intent-based networking system needs a function which is able to verify that the network is behaving as expected, to be programmed with those intent checks by software over an API, and to be able to provide triggers to external systems should the status of those checks change so that corrective action can be taken. Happy Fabric meets all of these criteria. So, as you can see, IP Fabric can provide the underpinnings for the entire adoption of network automation. Let's take a look at some of the features of the platform that help us along that path. So, as you can see here, we've opened the console onto IP Fabric, and what we're seeing is the snapshots page here. Um, IP Fabric is a snapshot based system. What that means is that each uh, day or twice a day, or how, however often um, customers able, they will run a snapshot of their network, which um, collects all of the information about all the devices um, that we're able to discover. That discovery is the very first thing that IP Fabric does once it's been installed. It's a very efficient process. It uses, um, basically once you supply credentials to the platform, it goes away um, and device by device discovers the configuration of and, and state of all of the uh, elements of the network. As you can see here, we've got a range of different vendors um, we've discovered as part of this um, snapshot. There are 600 and odd devices altogether in our uh, demo lab that took 13 minutes to discover. Um, one part of that is a hardware lab and I just want to dig a little deeper into that if I may. So you can see here all the devices that we discovered as part of that. What I want to do is show you what that process looks like. So I'm going to just pick a few of these. Um, and grab one of those and we'll grab one of these and I can show you what that that automated discovery process looks like so for each of these devices you can see that we've discovered a whole range of, of items but the way we would do that and I, I can show you through the CLI log here when we log into a device the first thing it, that we try and do is detect what type of device it is now um, in our case here we've logged into a 3750 switch a quick show version um, allows us, gives us sufficient information to work out right. This is a Cisco uh, Catalyst switch. It's, we've got the version of code that it's running um, and so on. So we're able to very quickly determine which commands that we need to run in order to retrieve the information that we're looking for. We pull information about interfaces. We pull information about configuration. Um, we pull in inf information about quality of service and MAC address tables and IP addressing and so on and so forth. Um, all of which is then uh, translated, but we'll come to that in a second. We can do the same for other vendors, obviously. Um, and if I look at the CLI log of this one, this is a, an extreme switch. You can see here, we log into the extreme switch. We do a show version and it doesn't understand it. So we run a series of different commands until we find the, the appropriate ones that gives us the information that allows us to determine what type of device it is. And then 
away we go. We're able to, to start pulling the um, state and the configuration for this device. Similarly, for this device, which is a, an Aruba wireless LAN controller, we go through the same process and determine, right, here we go. It's an Aruba uh, wireless LAN controller. This is the information that I want to pull from there. And we run those commands. Now, once all of that output is collected, it's parsed and added into our database um, to give us the topology information and structure and relationships between all the devices. I can very quickly uh, give you a feel for that. If I click through here, um, and I'm just going to turn some of this off for a second, just to make it clearer for you to see. So, um, an initial stab at the topology for that site shows the 3750 stack that we just saw in the middle here and all of these other devices connected to it. Now we've discovered that using CDP and LLDP in this case um, to determine the, the layer one connectivity. If I click on layer two, it shows uh, we now have spanning tree sh um, adjacencies showing here. Um, and if I click on layer three, I can actually turn off layer two because it uh, makes it complicated to see, but you can see the purple connections here show that there's layer three connections between those devices. If I uh, disconnect them, we can see that there's actually an EIGRP relationship here and the rest of them are static routes. So it gives us very quickly a topology um, that we're able to, to tailor to our own requirements here. Um, this is completely dynamic. We can just move these, these elements around as we should so choose. Now, obviously, we're not just gathering um, topology information. We have tables um, listing out all the inventory for all of the devices across the network um, and all of the information that we can gather from those, including things like uptime and reload reasons, but, but memory utilization, serial numbers, and so on. So there's all of the, the inventory information you would find useful. We can delve into the part numbers and the modules. We can delve into the interfaces that are connected to those. So for example, if we wanted to raise uh, a change on um, a router in site 38, and we were looking for all the ethernet interfaces that are currently down down so that we can find uh, one that we might want to use for our change, we can very quickly filter this table and all of a sudden we have that information. These are the interfaces and there are 14 of them in total. So there's a, a nice selection there for our change. Um, we also pull um, host endpoint details. And again, I can filter that list to very quickly track down where a particular uh, server is. For example, 10.6.6.128.112 is in our site 66 connected to this switch on that interface with that description there. Again, you can see very quickly that that, that inventory information has been um, parsed, understood, if you like, and then built into this, uh, into this model that we're able to, to uh, delve and ask interesting questions of. As well as the inventory, of course, we, we go into the, the technologies themselves that are deployed within those those devices. So we can have a look at how port channels are configured and how span entry um, is, is working, how routing is configured, the MPLS tags um, involved in the network and, and the quality of service. Um, for example, if I was looking for um, a VLAN um, in a particular site or which site was, was um, using a VLAN, a particular VLAN, VLAN 110, I can very quickly get to that information through, um, through a search there and a filter. And now we have the list of sites where that's, um, that's available to us. If, for example, now we wanted to use that information to make a change, things get interesting because we're able to, uh, to take that information and bring it out of the system. And I'll show you that in a second. Let's say, for example, we wanted to go to site 38 and we wanted to remove VLAN 110. Well, if I click through this um, link here, that gives me the list of devices 
that um, have VLAN 110 configured. Now I could very quickly just export those details to a CSV, open this up and um, hand that those details to an engineer to go ahead, make those changes and remove VLAN 110. Or I could do something a bit cleverer than that. I could, um, through this table description element here, I can determine the information that I might need to do an API call to pull that same data out of IP Fabric. Now, if I've got the API information here, that means that I'm able to create an automated process in order to get that information and, and work with it in some shape or form. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that, that data from the, uh, from the request there, and I'm going to put it into this tool, which is called Postman, which is um, something we use to build and test API requests before we then go and build them into automated uh, uh, scripts and programs. Um, so I'm just going to re-authenticate to the server like so. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll open up a request to, there we go. So this is the request that I would need to pull that same data. And if I look at the body here, you can see that these, this header is built in exactly the same way as the, as the, uh, the details that were shown to us in the, uh, in the GUI before. If I click on send, you can see then the data that I'm given is the same data that was in that table. Now, but this is obviously in a form that is now able to be programmed. Now, what I can do is I can show you how then we might take that and build um, that into a, a program and query IP Fabric directly. So this is um, Visual Studio um, with a Python script built in here. It's uh, has a specific requirement but essentially what this one does is is uses a module that we've written um, to fetch inventory detail from ip fabric and then write it out um, in a form that's acceptable for ansible uh, which is uh, an automation and orchestration um, platform to use as an inventory um, to, to pass data about um, the hosts and about the, the variables um, that are allocated to that host into Ansible for, for use in those automation workflows. And you can see, so if I, if I run the, uh, the particular script with the list parameter defined there and the filter, and you can see the, the format of the filter exactly the same as we saw from the API request and from the, uh, from the, the web UI. and it outputs uh, a list of all the devices in the hardware lab, um, the information about how to connect to it and everything. These are specific host variables for, for each device. And then the groups of, um, of those devices based on vendor. So HP devices, Juniper, Cisco, Riverbed, and so on. And obviously from our point of view, we're interested in site 38 because we're talking about our change for uh, for VLAN 110 so we can filter based on site 38 and these are our site 38 so, devices um, which are all Cisco devices as you can see and in theory now that could be the output um, is able to be used as th that inventory for an Ansible playbook to go ahead and make the changes that we talked about earlier what we might then do is execute an API request to IP Fabric to rediscover those devices and confirm that VLAN 110 was no longer present. Hopefully that demonstration um, gave you a very quick flavor of how IP Fabric helps you get started with network automation. Um, I'm just gonna close now with the main takeaways from today's webinar. The first point is always start with visibility. Make sure you're collecting configs and data from the devices across your network so you have a complete baseline of the operational state. 
use the gathered data to control your automation tasks, understand which devices are in scope for changes, methods of access, existing config that needs to be changed, and how that device is operating right now. Ensure that you verify and test the changes you make are successful. Back them out, if not. Use the data to make that initial assessment and then refresh that data to verify the success or otherwise of your changes. And integrate the collected data into your wider ecosystem. If it's collected from the network, it presents a, a true state of the network at that moment. Make sure that other systems and platforms which need that viewpoint are kept up to date. IP Fabric is uniquely positioned to provide the foundation to your network automation strategy by making that deep network data collection, analysis and presentation simple, both programmatically through its API and interactively through the web UI. Well, that concludes our presentation for this morning. If you want to see more of IP Fabric, please get in touch after the webinar and we can arrange a fuller demo of the product and a trial if you're interested. If you've any questions, let's take a few minutes now to answer them. Hello. Hi. I have a question actually. Ah, great stuff. Uh, you mentioned that uh, for automation uh, with IP Fabric, you can basically close the loop but you should show just how to pull the data out of IP Fabric through API. Yeah. Is it possible to like run commands uh, against IP Fabric as well, for example, for the verification of the changes made or how does it work? So that's a really good question, actually. Um, we um, have a mechanism uh, in IP Fabric um, that, that whereby when um, verification checks are run and, and when snapshots are created we can we can create um, what's called a webhook which is a, a triggered event um, uh, out into an external system so in effect when um, when a snapshot is created or when a verification check is is run we can then trigger an external system to go ahead and check back with ip fabric the status of that uh, of that uh, operation and oper and then execute uh, um, commands based on on the output from that so it gives you that opportunity to to trigger that closed loop um, process is that helpful yeah i think that's pretty nice solution actually thank okay, you thank no problem Hello, I have a question. I uh, unfortunately missed the beginning of the webinar. Uh, will there be a recording somewhere where I can check the whole session? Yeah, um, well, the session's been recorded. Um, I did mention it at the beginning, but uh, yeah, the session's been recorded and will be published on our YouTube channel. Um, we'll be sending the links out to anyone who's, uh, who's interested um, as soon as it's available. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, if that's it for now, um, we'll wrap up there. Um, as I just said, we'll be in touch with those details for the recording. So uh, please feel free to share that with your colleagues. And of course, get in touch if we can help you in any way uh, executing your network automation strategy. Thank you very much for joining. <laughs>